Okay, <laughs> it's been a long time. Back for a rant of the guru. Well, guru's rants, guru's talks. Um, it's the year of the tiger, so happy New Year's, uh, happy tiger year, 2022. Um, haven't been making videos about talking just because I've been quiet for many reasons. Uh, one of them being my work, related to my work. So sometimes it's better not to uh, not to talk about things, and just stay quiet, let things go by. So anyhow, we've had an interesting several years with this situation going on in the world. Hopefully you all stay safe, keep your immune system strong. Uh, contrary to the narrative going on in the media, yes, vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, um, black seed oil, bone broth, chicken soup, uh, all that stuff is very good for you and it will keep you safe or at least help you get the ability to fight and get your immune system strong enough to kick the crap out of this current situation. I'm not going to use names because if you use the name of it, we all know what we're talking about. If we use the name of the uh, illness, then you get uh, demonetized or deplatformed or flagged or censored. So I had it and I beat it naturally uh, using what I just told you. <laughs> the other thing is uh, men, keep your testosterone levels up. That helps. Um, and just make sure you take care of yourself. Anyhow, on to more important things. Let's talk about sea lot a little bit because this is what this video is about. Um, I'll make it short. So some of my students ask me, what's the difference between Harimau and Sirach? And what's the difference between Harimau and Chimande? Um, well, let me tell you a little bit about history. This is going to be a kind of a blanket, uh, generalized video about what I know about the history of Harimau Silat. Um, for those of you who know, and those of you who don't know, I train Harimau Silat under two instructors, okay? Um, Mahaguru Richard Crab de Boards, where we learn what he calls Machan Hitam, which is Black Tiger Harimau. And this is under the his evolution of what he learned from Pendekar Hanafi. May he rest in peace, he passed away recently. Um, so may he rest in peace, may his family uh, be at peace. Anyhow, that variant <laughs> of Harimau um, mainly is an offshoot, um, or let's say a very combative, uh, it's, it's molded to be very combative out of Sumatran Minangkabau Harima. So if you were to go to Minang today, or the Minangkabau Islands, the Sumatran Island, uh, that region, you'd probably find the root motions that you see in the style of Harimau that is used by Pendeka Richard Crab de Boards, my teacher, and his teacher, Pendekar Hanafi. Pendekar Hanafi and his father, they always use their sea lot um, military-wise. The, 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 the father of Pendekar Hanafi was in the military, he was a general, and I'm not quite sure if Pendekar Hanafi himself was in the military, but I know that the father of Pendekar Hanafi trained military and was in the military and even traveled to certain places in the world to teach Harim al-Salat. One of the places they went was to Cuba during the Cuba Revolution, okay? Um, I'm not gonna go into too much depth with that, but the Harim al that was taught to Guru Richard Crab de Boards has always been used for, let's think of it more like special forces type training, okay? Jungle warfare and that kind of thing. Um, Guru Richard Crab de Boards himself uses this Harimau in his current line of work, which he's been doing for many, many years, over 30, 40 years of security work, which is executive protection, presidential security. Uh, he also trains uh, military special forces in Africa, um, in Ghana, in different regions. So
So more and more, this style of sea lot has moved completely to the side of combat and survival, okay? And not to take away from the traditional, from the culture, all of that is wonderful, all of that's great. Um, we don't really focus too much on that. We, we, we give respect to it, but we focus 100% on health and wellness, strength, and combative training and survival training, okay? So that's that type of Harimau from Guru Richard Crab Du Bois. The other type of Harimau that we train comes from Surak and its predecessors, which is Chimande, which is also Chimachan, okay? Think of it like little tiger, okay? The Javanese tiger is a small tiger. So, but it's a very ferocious and intelligent tiger. What is the difference between Menankabao, Silat, or Harimau, and Javanese Harimau? Now, I'm gonna pause for a minute and let you know that we're gonna go back to Guru Richard Crafted Boards. Pendakar Hanafi's family, the father, married a Javanese woman, and she was trained in Setiahati, Chimande Chimachan. So she also had Javanese Harimau. So the lines blur a little bit because the Minankabao Harimau that we got from Pendakar Hanafi through Guru Richard Crab Du Bords and through Guru Richard Crab Du Bords uh, evolution of it contains both the Minankabao Silat and the Javanese Simachan. Okay? Now, if you know a little bit about the history, uh, supposedly King Prabhu Siliwongi brought Harimau from Java, from his kingdom, over to the Sumatrans, and they evolved together, okay? It's not to say that the Sumatrans and the Minangkabau did not have their own Harimau. They probably did, because this type of sea lot is more based on animism and animal movement and primal uh, mindset and hunter mindset, okay? It's not so much like you see the more Kuntao influenced sea lots that are more hand based Juru motions like you see in Sorak and Chimandi. Okay, but the Harimau movements you see them in almost all the old cultures of ground fighting. Okay, uh, in fact, the Chinese have a Kuntao system which is called dog fighting, and that dog fighting has very, very, very similar movements to the Harimau that we see in Harimau Minangkabau and very similar to uh, the Javanese Simachan. Another interesting thing to note is that according to the history, um, there were guards that came from Siam through, I forget which empire, and there was always trading going on. So, uh, for example, a king would send a emissary of his kingdom, and they would send guards, and they would probably send one of the daughters to marry, to one of the other kingdoms and usually as a dowry they would exchange their, their goods their trades uh, maybe gold maybe some silver or copper um, and they would train their guards so like I said for example um, if Thailand was doing or at that time it was called Siam would do a trade with with Sumatra they would probably exchange 